Today we're going to talk about predicting fixed mortgage rates into the future. We got a good one today. to predict the future of fixed interest rate mortgages because they know a little secret. And that secret lies in the fact that banks borrow money to lend to you. You see, when you get a mortgage from a bank, the bank isn't lending you its own money. It's actually borrowed that money from someone else. That someone else could be individuals, it could be institutions like pension funds or investment funds uh, or even other banks. Now the rate at which they borrow this money is dictated by the bond market. The bond market is how the Bank of Canada borrows from individuals and institutions itself. Basically, individuals give the Bank of Canada money to spend and the Bank of Canada in return gives them a bond promising to pay them at an interest rate. Now the bonds have what's called coupons attached to them. The coupons represent an interest rate. And when the coupons are taken off the bond, the underlying bond still has a face value. So if you have a bond for $100,000, well then that is redeemable at the Bank of Canada for $100,000 at a particular date. Bonds with the coupons removed are then traded on the open market. And this is a gigantic market. It's bigger than the stock exchange. These bonds are traded all over the world every day, all day. Now because these bonds have a payment date on them, they're actually traded at a discount to the face value. So a million dollar bond that's payable in say 2026 in, and you're in 2023, well, it's not going to be worth a million dollars today. It'll be discounted back. And that discount is based on what the market is willing to pay for a million dollars in 2026. Once the Bank of Canada issues a bond, the bondholder will often turn around and trade that bond on the open market. The bond is actually worth less than the face value of the bond because the face value of the bond is based on some future date. This gets into a concept called time value of money, which we'll come back to later on. The main point for now is to understand that a million dollar bond that's payable in three years time may only be worth $950,000 today. Now, the difference between those two figures is normally expressed as a percentage, which we call the yield. Bank of Canada bonds are considered to be extremely low risk. When a bond comes due, Bank of Canada at worst can always print more money and pay off its debt. Mortgages on the other hand have a little more risk attached to them. They're still extremely low risk. I mean, what are the chances are that you're not going to be able to pay your mortgage and the bottoms are going to fall out of the property market? However, there is still some risk attached to it. From a bank's perspective, a mortgage is an investment. It lends out money and expects to get a stream of payments in return, paying back that money plus some interest. Now, because mortgages are inherently more risky than Bank of Canada bonds, when the bank has money to lend, it can choose to invest in Bank of Canada bonds, but if instead it lends you money for a mortgage, it expects to get more interest than it would get paid by the Bank of Canada for investing in its bond. This is what's known in economics as the risk premium. Now, the bond rate changes over time because investors have different expectations about the, the value of the bond, and as we saw previously, the value of a bond relative to its face value is known as the yield. Now, because the day-to-day -day value of the bonds change, so too does the figure known as the yield. Banks look at the yield figure and they price their mortgages accordingly. They add a small risk premium to whatever the appropriate bond yield is for that term. So the three-year fixed interest rate mortgage is priced based on a small premium over the three-year bond yield i.e. bonds that are maturing in three years time. Now herein lies the secret. The bond prices fluctuate much more rapidly than banks change their interest rates. But we're not done yet. The next piece of the puzzle is a concept that's known as time value of money. Time value of money is based on the concept that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. Now that may not always be literally true, if I were to offer you a choice of a dollar today or two dollars tomorrow, you may well have the discipline to wait until tomorrow for the extra money. To use the old finance professor's trick, we just add a bunch of zeros. Would you rather have 10 million dollars today or 40 million dollars 
in 50 years time? There's only two answers to that. $10 million today or you're lying. This applies to the bond market as well. Short-term bonds are inherently more valuable than long-term bonds. A two-year bond trades at a lower discount relative to its face rate than the five-year bond, which is another way of saying the yield is lower. So translating that to the mortgage market, the interest rate on a two-year fixed mortgage is normally going to be lower than the interest rate on a five-year fixed mortgage. That is because they're priced off of different yields. So it's all well and good to know this information, but what do we do with it? Well, helpfully, the Bank of Canada publishes bond rates daily on its website. We head there at www.bankofcanada.ca forward slash rates forward slash interest dash rates forward slash Canadian dash bonds. I'll put a link in the notes below. That takes us to selected bond yields on their website. Now, I like to change the defaults. You can see here they, they give the long-term bonds, the average yield over 10 years, and the real return bond. You can just switch all these off. I find it's probably easiest because what we care about most generally is the five-year rate, and also it's good to compare with the two-year rate. Now, as you can see over time, um, typically the two-year rate is going to be lower yield than the five-year rate. But what's happened here in the last couple uh, months is that the, the yield curve is actually inverted. So when the, the orange line here, the two-year rate is actually higher than the pink line, the five-year rate, it means that the market expectations are that the economy is going to slow. Basically, investors are valuing five-year money less than two, or valuing five-year money more than two-year money. And you can see there's actually quite a bit of a spread. Now that's actually translated into the mortgage market where two-year mortgage rates are actually higher than five-year mortgage rates, which is quite unusual. Down at the bottom here, we can adjust these sliders to get to zoom in. And you can see this is happening, being recorded rather, um, just after the SVB bank failure. And you can see how yields just dropped right off. This is indicative of the market expecting rates to drop. Um, uh, interest rates, that is. Uh, what that generally means is that they're expecting a recession to come. So we had a very small bump back up yesterday, but as you can see, it's still down quite a bit from, from where it was. Again, if we zoom out, we can see how much bond yields have increased since the beginning of, say, 2021. They're flat, 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 and this is last year's steady, steady increases. You generally hear about it more in the, the Bank of Canada overnight borrowing rate, uh, but it's also reflected on the bond markets, whereas the bond, but the bond markets are looking ahead. So this is what the market thinks is going to happen in the years ahead. Again, we can zoom right, zoom right in, and this is giving us an idea. See, this happened um, about a week and a half ago. It was when they were high, and then they suddenly started to drop, and we saw that in rate drops this week. So these actually dropped right before the rates dropped. Uh, we went and actually switched a bunch of mortgages into lower rates, uh, that is their rate holds, and mortgages that were ready to fund, we actually did a rate drop. Uh, in order to take advantage of this. That's how you do it. It's one website, a couple of clicks, you can see exactly what's gonna happen with fixed rates. A rate hold, which most banks will hold for 120 days, actually transfers the risk of interest rates increasing to the bank. Even if rates go up, they guarantee you the lower rate. Now, this comes at a cost to the bank, so you'll often find a premium attached to rate holds. That is, the rate you get on a rate hold is actually a little bit higher than the rate that they're advertising. But don't worry, because you can always go back and renegotiate. Just think of your rate hold as a worst case scenario and expect to do better, unless rates are rising. Moreover, and I'll let you in on a little secret here, there's a ton of lenders out there that don't do rate holds at all. This is why it makes sense to shop around, 
even when you think you've got a great rate hold. Make sure you find yourself a good broker, do your legwork, and good luck. Have a great day.